Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is our um, recorded Zoom lecture, okay, for the topic uh, trespass, a new topic, okay, trespass to land. In the previous lecture, we have covered trespass to persons, okay. We discussed thoroughly on assault, battery, false imprisonment, okay. So for today, um, you are going to start with the new topic trespass to land, or the acronym or initial is TTL. So we have around 41 slides, okay, so I plan to uh, divide our lecture into two parts. So for now, okay, we are going to start with the part one, okay, of trespass to land. Let's look what we have here. Okay, all right, so before we proceed with the definition, okay, of the term trespass to land, okay, we want to know, okay, what's the meaning? Okay, what's the legal definition of the term land? Okay, all right. So if we refer to section 5, okay, NLC, which is National Land Code, right, applicable to Malaysia, okay, land is defined as, at least there are five uh, components here, okay, all right. It, it will include surface, okay, so land is surface as well as the earth below, okay, below the surface. And land also is defined as all vegetation, okay, whether it needs labor or natural, okay, whatever plants, okay, whatever trees, okay, vegetation. Land also, okay, will include, okay, all things attached to the earth. Meaning like here, for example, whatever buildings or structure, okay, right, which is attached to the, to the earth, okay, to the earth, then it is considered as land, all right. And then land is also, I mean, land is also land that is covered by water. Okay, all right. So all of this, okay, uh, it is interpreted as land, okay, as far as the legal definition is concerned. Okay, let's go to the definition of trespass to land. Okay, remember we are dealing with intentional thoughts, all right. So when we discuss about the definition here, obviously we start with with intention, okay. So trespass to land is intentionally, okay, entering. Okay, that's the way, right? I mean, that's the thing. Entering or remaining on, okay, or causing any physical matter to come into contact with, okay, with what land, okay, in the possession of another. Okay, that's basically the definition of the word trespass to land. Okay. So the 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 essence, okay, the gist of the uh, definition here, the meaning here is that, okay, it revolves around unjustifiable, okay, unjustifiable interference, okay, with the possession of land. So the keyword is uh, possession as well as unjustifiable interference. So here, entering, remaining, okay, causing physical matter to come into contact. All right, it all actually comes under. Interference, okay, it is part of interference with the possession, all right. So, what's the, what's the objective, okay, what's the, the reason of having this uh, rule, okay, for trespass to land? Basically, it is to protect the possession. So, it's not really meant to protect the ownership of land. So, from this uh, statement here, all right, from the rule here, Actually, impliedly, it says that possession is not the same as ownership in the eyes of law. Okay, in the here, a person might possess the land, but he's not the owner. It's possible. Okay, and then as far as the trespass to land is concerned, okay, we, uh, I mean, we emphasize or we focus on the possession. Okay, we don't really care about the ownership of the land. All right. So this is some of the examples uh, which might amount to trespass to land. Okay, some common um, ways okay, of committing tra trespass to land. For example, okay, the most common one, walking onto land without permission. I mean, somebody walk onto some uh, some. I mean, uh, not his own land. Okay, without permission, or refuse. Okay, refusing to leave when permission has been withdrawn. So. He doesn't want to leave, okay? Even though, for example, he was given permission to be on the land for a few hours and after the time expires, so he's no longer has the permission, okay? He's considered as trespasser, right? His act by refusing to leave, it amounts to trespass to land. Or let's say he doesn't walk or he doesn't refuse to leave, but he just throw objects onto others' land here, okay? So throwing objects also 
is uh, actually amounts to it amounts to TTL trespass to land. Okay, let's now look at, uh, let's have a look at the basic principles of TTL. We have at least two basic principles okay, governing TTL. Okay, the first one, TTL is actionable per se. In the here, plaintiff or claimant doesn't have to prove actual damage or actual losses. Okay, the moment is, it is being committed that uh, the, uh, the plaintiff has the right to sue, okay, can take an uh, action against the other party, against the defendant. Okay, the case is, Segar Restu and Wong, Chai, Wong Kai Chuan and another 1994, this local case, all right? And it discusses about the rules, okay? the basic rules governing TTL here. Um, this is the quotation, all right, from that, the judgment. The first part, it talk about um, who is trespasser, okay, here. In law, a trespasser is the one, is one who wrongfully enters on land, okay, in the possession of another. So the land doesn't belong to him, all right? And he has neither right nor permission to be on the land. So he doesn't have right, he doesn't have permission to be there. But he just entered, he just walked onto the land. So of obviously he is a trespasser. And then on the part of the plaintiff, all right, uh, he is entitled, he has the right to recover damages, okay, compensation in trespass, even though okay, he has sustained no actual loss. But however, okay, damages here, compensation okay, must be specifically Proof because why there's no actual losses on his part, so must prove. I mean, must um, ask from the court, he must prove and uh, ask for the compensation, right? When he filed the action in the court, okay. Another rule governing TTL is uh, continuing trespass, all right? Mean that here is possible for, for the trespass to, to be continued, okay? I mean, to continue, it happens day to day, all right? So uh, it happens when a failure to remove an object or even dependent himself okay, remains on the land. Okay, for example, more than a day, two days, all right? So here, uh, failure to remove an object unlawfully placed on land, okay? So, so this act, all right, it will lead to a new course of action each day, okay, for as long as it lasts. So it is counted as day-to-day -day basis. So after 24 hours, a new course of action. After 24 hours, new course of action. For example, seven days, so seven, Causes of action, basically. Okay, we have um, uh, we have a common law case here, very classic example. Okay, Holmes and Wilson, Wilson and others here, 1839. Okay, what happened here? Defendant built support okay, for a road on plaintiff land. Obviously, this is an act of trespass. Okay, so defendant actually had paid damages, okay, compensation for the trespass. But actually later, he will have liable again, okay, in a further action for what, what's happened now. Um, he failed to remove the support, the buttresses. Okay, what is it? The buttress here, support against, uh, built against wall. So whatever structure that you build on, um, on the land not, not belonging to you, so obviously it is an action of trespass. Okay, even though you have paid the compensation, I mean, defendant paid compensation, but uh, so long he, that he didn't remove the, um, the things okay, which cause the trespass here, so he could be liable okay, day to day basis. Okay, we have also local case on this case okay, Chia Kim Tong and Taro Ko, okay, 1989. Okay, defendant's house okay, encroached onto plaintiff land. Okay, all right, and then when he was being sued by the plaintiff, okay, defendant in his different, he defended his case by relying on estoppel and consent. And he said, well, you, you are stopped from claiming that because why? The previous owner, okay, before you came into, uh, because, before you, 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 you be, I mean, be, before you, you own the land, okay, before plaintiff, had never complained. So, it, it is, uh, I don't, I mean, it shouldn't be any problem, okay, for me, to, for defendant to encroach the land. So, that's the defense, okay, by the defendant. But the court didn't accept the claim, the defense, yeah. The court said, well, this was a case of continuing trespass, okay? And actually, the fresh uh, cause of action arises from day to day. The Latin term is de die indium, okay? So long as the trespass exists. So long you don't remove, okay, the part of the house which encroach, okay, the, onto the plaintiff land, then actually the um, trespass of land, TTL, continues, okay? You can claim uh, the compensation, okay, so long as it exists. Okay, now we go to the elements of uh, TTL. Basically, we have two important elements here, okay. First, okay, 
uh, plaintiff must prove possession of land and then also elements of unjustifiable interference of land. So if you combine these two elements together, okay, you have a definition of the TTL. Okay? All right. So TTL is an unjustifiable interference okay, with the possession of land. So that's basically the TTL. Okay, now we are going to discuss one by one. Okay, possession of land first. Okay, so possession of land, uh, um, the claimant, okay, the plaintiff, all right, need to prove that he has exclusive possession so that he can sue, so that he has the right to sue. Okay, all right. And then for possession here, we have uh, two categories, okay, two types of possession. Okay, it's either de facto possession or de jure possession. Okay, de facto is actual possession. I mean, you have the things physically okay, under your control so that you can exclude others, alright? But for the jury possession here, okay, possession in the eyes of law, we presume that you possess, okay? So the law may presume that a person is in possession of a particular property. So uh, maybe physically you don't uh, have control but then in the eyes of law, you are the one who possess um, the land, okay? Alright, so that's the de jure possession. So for both here, actually, yes, um, the first uh, element is considered as fulfilled, okay, possession of land. Another related term is occupation, okay, whether it is similar, okay, possession distinguished from occupation. So obviously it is not the same, alright, it could be similar or connected but then it's not the same, alright. If we were to compare, actually, occupation here is a much lesser status. It doesn't fulfill okay, uh, the requirement of possession. Okay? So, mere occupation does not amount to possession. Occupation is when you occupy the land. Okay? You, you occupy the premises. Okay, all right? it, it doesn't make you uh, to be the one who has possession. You just occupy mere occupation. All right? For example, licensees okay, who is not in possession. I mean, you are given... Um, consent or permission to be there, so you occupy the land, but you are not the person who is in possession, okay? Or for example, or even trespasser, okay? You occupy the land, but you are, uh, you are occupy it unlawfully, so obviously you are not uh, the person in possession, okay? You are in occupation unlawfully, but then you don't have any possession. So that's kind of connection of occupation and possession. So occupation doesn't amount to possession, but those who possess may be he also occupy the land. Okay, right? So that's the connection or how do we distinguish these two uh, connected or uh, terms here. Alright, let's go to the uh, case law. This is a landmark case actually as far as the uh, land, law, land law is concerned. Okay, when you um, learn your land law later. Okay? The case is Siddiq bin Haji. Sorry, Siddiq bin Haji Muhammad, I think. Alright, sorry. Siddiq bin Haji Muhammad okay, and 462 others. So Siddiq is the, the one who leads uh, the suit here. All right? And the government of the state of Perak. So all of them are suing the government of the state of Perak. Okay, 1982. What happened here? Plaintiff, all, right, all of them, for altogether 463 okay, here, open up a large part of a jungle area in North Perak. Okay, northern part of Perak here. And later, okay, after some time, okay, Plaintiff were given notice by the state government okay, to stop work and vacate the area. Okay, remember, uh, land is state matters. Okay, land is wholly owned by state government. So now notice was issued by state government. Please stop work and then please vacate the area. Okay, you're not supposed to be there. Okay, all right. Despite the fact that you have cleaned up the uh, the jungle. Okay, so because of that, plaintiff were not happy. So they brought an action. Okay for a declaration, okay, asking for a declaration from the court that they were entitled in law and in equity okay, to be in possession of the land, opened up and occupied by them. They said, well, we are entitled to the land. Okay, we clean up, we clean up, okay, we open up, okay, we possess and then we occupy. So it's ours. Okay, that's basically their, um, they, they are, they're asking for a declaration here. Okay, but the court held that, well, plaintiff here, yeah, okay, all of them cannot succeed because they are Squatters, okay, all right. They just uh, occupy, okay, without permission. So squatters have no rights, okay, either in law or in equity. So that's the law in Malaysia. So illegal occupation of state land, okay, is an offense. Okay, you don't have right, but actually you have committed an offense under Section Two Four Five of the National Land Code. So um, you can cross refer, but basically it says that 
well, adverse uh, possession ke, uh, won't give you any uh, legal rights ke, over the land. Okay, you occupy the land but it doesn't make yours, okay, despite whatever things that you have done to the land. Okay, so again, now we come back to the um, the element of possession, okay, the first element. Okay. So basically, TTL is essentially okay, violation, okay, infringement of the rights of possession. So it's not about the rights of ownership. Okay. We don't care who owns the land, but so long you have uh, the legal possession, okay, then you have the right to sue for TTL, okay, for, especially between landlord and tenant. Here, okay. for example, if the, the, the landlord has rented out the land okay, to the tenant, so who has better right now for TTL? So landlord uh, uh, in that particular situation, okay, cannot sue for a mere trespass to land in the occupation of his tenant. So let's say there's a, any trespasser, trespass onto the land, who has the right to sue? It's the tenant okay, who has the uh, factual, I mean, uh, de jure, de facto possession okay, of the land. Okay? So such an action can be brought only by the tenant. And this tenant even may sue the landlord himself okay, if the latter's entry was not justifiable under the lease agreement. For example, they have agreed that uh, the landlord cannot be on the tenant's land okay, unless um, it is authorized or given permission by the tenant. So landlord can be the trespasser. Okay, right. So a landlord of lease premises does not uh, have exclusive possession. So, nor does a lodger or licensee. So, basically, in that situation, okay, the position of landlord is similar to a lodger okay, or even a licensee. Meaning that yeah, all of the people here, all right, lodger, landlord, licensee, okay, it, they don't have the possession, okay, the, the rights of possession. But if tenant or subtenant, they have, they have this possession. So, that's the, um, the decision in the case of street and Mount Fort, okay, 1985. Let's have a look what happened here. Okay. So this is a appeal case. Okay. Respondent Street. So um, at the lower court. Okay, uh, yeah, so Street. The Respondent Street. This is a appeal case. Okay. So Respondent Street okay, granted a license to the appellant. Okay, Mount Fort okay, to occupy two rooms at a weekly rent. Mean that here, um, okay, I'm renting out the the, the rooms to you, okay, and you have, you have to pay me weekly rent. Okay, rent uh, rental is paid on weekly basis, okay. And then they have agreement, actually. Okay, the written agreement was titled, they put a title, okay, license agreement. Okay, so it's not tenancy agreement, okay. And it contained declaration that it did not create tenancy. Yeah, okay, we agreed, okay, to give you the license to be here, all right, to occupy the room, to pay me a uh, weekly rent, okay, but this is not a tenancy. But later, uh, they have problem because why? The tenant here, all right, they wanted to ask for claim for uh, fair rent, okay, under the rent tax here, okay. So the issues, uh, the relevant issues here, okay, whether exclusive possession, all right, I mean, the here you occupy with exclusive possession creates tenancy, okay. So if the agreement that, which is titled license agreement here, was merely a license and not tenancy, then Montfort, okay, the, the tenant, okay, could not claim the right to a fair rent under the rent tax. Okay. It has to be rental arrangement, rental agreement, cannot be license agreement. So the court held that at least okay, must grant exclusive possession of the property for a fixed or periodic, periodic term uh, at the rent. Okay. It is the nature of the rights created which are important. Okay. We don't really care about the, the title or the label, all right? So superficial labels are irrelevant. Okay, all right? Maybe you want to evade the law here. Okay. So the only intention that was relevant was the intention to confer exclusive possession. So does this arrangement actually confer, give the uh, tenant exclusive possession or not? If yes, then it will actually comply with this rent X okay, fulfill the requirements of rent X. Okay, we also have, uh, this is actually additional uh, information and knowledge, all right. Uh, uh, we call it as a doctrine of the rights of immediate possession, okay. All right, especially whenever it involves uh, sale and purchase of property here, okay. All right, so actually the new owner, okay, um, can be in possession, all right, since the commencement of his Right, the moment the property is being sold okay, to the other party, so the new owner has the right, okay. So the, the right starts from uh, the moment the, uh, the, 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 the transaction has been concluded. Okay, all right. 
example here, when a property is being sold, okay, so if a landlord flies an immediate possession bond, he wants to uh, possess okay, the, the property immediately, okay, so whoever occupying the land, all right, the tenant actually has six days okay, in which to respond, I mean, it has to vacate um, the property. This is actually the, the rule at common law, okay, but whatever rule in Malaysia, we have a uh, national input and other uh, related uh, rules, okay, or tax. Okay, we go to the second uh, element. Okay, we are done with possession. The second element is unjustifiable interference. Okay, in what way interference here is being committed? All right, so we have at least three ways. Okay, in which it might amount to a TTL. Okay, the first one, okay, by wrongful entry. I mean, the uh, defendant okay, enter the land wrongfully. Okay, it could be personal entry by defendant or by some other person on the instruction of the defendant or even by Animal, okay, belong to defendant, okay, into the land or building possessed by plenty. For example, if the defendant's uh, cat, or, cat or, or even cat or cow, okay, enter onto um, plenty of uh, land here, all right, is that a TTL? Yes, it is, okay. Another way of committing a trespass, or this is interference as well, okay, remaining on land beyond the permission given, okay. Even a person who has lawfully entered commits a trespass if he remains there after his right of entry or leave or license has expired. So initially, it was a lawful licensee, but later when the license expires, okay, when the uh, the withdrawal of the consent, okay, the permission to be on the land, on the in the premises, for example, then from that moment of time, so that particular licensee became. Trespasser, okay, a trespasser. Or another way of interference okay, here is by placing things on land. Okay, for example, to place any physical object or noxious substance here, yeah, okay, or for example, even to throw stools or to pour rubbish upon plenty land. So this is another example of TTL. So not necessarily that you enter the land, okay, not necessarily that you remain beyond uh, the permission, okay, just placing things on land as well, it might amount to TTL. Okay, we have the case here, okay, Yip Shushan and Sin Hip Lee and Maru Bani. Okay, here, uh, Sin Berhad 202. So, plaintiff and defendant, they were owners of two adjoining lands, so they are neighbours, okay, both own the lands, alright, and defendant had carried on works on the golf course and a huge residential and commercial complex on his land. So, certain construction work going on here on the land, alright, and then uh, debris came from defendant's construction works, okay, were down onto plaintiff land and it formed a steep slope here, all right? So, is that an X of TTL here? Yes, okay, so defendant was liable in trespass to land, even though defendant didn't actually walk onto plaintiff land, okay, but then the fact that the debris was uh, dumped okay, onto plaintiff land, then this is, uh, this is a case of TTL, obviously, okay? Okay, another subtopic is trespass to highway. So, highway is part of uh, land, lah, basically here. All right, we have a um, common law case, a very, very old case, classic case here, Hickman and Maisie. Okay, here, plaintiff used his land to train horses. So, he's uh, some uh, horses, okay, training going on. And then there was a road or actually a highway, okay, across the plaintiff land. And defendant used the road in order to spy on the plaintiff houses. Not only use the highway, okay, but actually he did something to spy, okay, to get some information whatsoever, okay, for his personal benefit. All right. So the court held that, okay, defendant had committed trespass to land, okay, when he was not using the road for its purpose, okay, which was to cross over to the other side of the land. So it's beyond the norm. Okay, here, all right, this is the judgment, okay. A man resting at the side of the road or taking a sketch from the highway will not be a trespass, so that's something which is common. But defendant's activities, okay, here, it fell outside ordinary and reasonable user of the highway. It's no longer reasonable when you want to spy onto the uh, plaintiff activities okay, of horse training here. So it amounted to trespass. Okay, okay uh, what if the interference uh, is with regards to S space? Okay, is it considered as TTL? The answer is yes, it is. Okay, so it's interference can be committed with the surface of plaintiff land, okay, or even with the subsoil below the plaintiff land, as well as 
with as face above plenty flat above okay so it's on the surface it's below all right the subsoil subsoil below and as face as well okay so this is some of the example which shows to us interference with a space here. Okay, the case is Calson and Imperial Tobacco Company. Okay, example here is advertising signboard okay, which was erected by defendant on their own shop. So they have the shop and they have they uh, they have this advertising signboard projected only eight inches. I think it's quite quite long. Eight inches here. Okay, into the space above plaintiff shop. All right, so is it a TTL? Yes, okay, it created trespass and mandatory injunction was issued to remove the signboard. So this is an act of TTL, so please remove it, okay, all right. Another example of uh, interference with space is tower crane, okay, in Willerton and Wilson and Richard Constable Limited here, yeah? okay. A tower crane on construction sites, okay, uh, swung over adjoining land, okay, all right, so uh, adjoining land, all right. So this amounted to TTL and plaintiff was entitled to injunction. Okay, we have another local case here. This is the case by Ferrocop. We are going to have a look at the facts after this, okay? But this is a summary. Uh, appellant encroached into the space of respondent's land, okay, by building a side window. Okay, I mean, yeah, the building it doesn't encroach, only the side window, okay? So is it a trespass? Yes, okay, it was a trespass and mandatory injunction was issued. So we have um, uh, illustration here. Okay, this is the hotel by, bought by a talent and it has um, a side window here. Okay, so it encroached onto uh, the land here, all right? This is the full facts actually. Both actually, um, I mean, they are hotel owner actually, all right? One own. Lot number 26, another one on lot number 25 adjoining okay, next to each other. So a four-story hotel stood on lot 26, okay, existing one. Okay, and previous owner of lot 26 okay, obtained planning permission to build the windows which protrude into adjacent land, uh, adjacent lot of 25. So the, the window is already there and it has permission. Okay, but there was undertaking key okay, agreement between the previous owner okay, to remove the window if later any buildings were built on lot 25. And yes, key, okay, all right. Later, owner of lot 25 wanted to build a hotel. He okay, asking new owner of lot 26 to remove the window and because the window protrude onto the land. All right, but he failed to do so, he doesn't want to remove. All right, but of said that well. The law has clearly spelled out okay, the rights of an individual over his land. So he's given exclusive use of a space above his land. Okay, not necessarily that you touch on the surface. So even, even a space also you have the right to sue for TTL. So the owner of lot 26 here had no right to encroach into the a space of lot 25 okay, by uh, the fact that the, the, the window there. Okay, right? Okay, the question is what, whether there's any limits of a space okay, uh, to some extent, to which extent that you own the space here. So we have section 44, subsection 1 of uh, National Land Code. It provides okay, here, a person has the right to, to the exclusive use and enjoyment of so much of the column of a space above okay, the surface of the land as is reasonably necessary okay, to the lawful use and enjoyment of the said land. So whatever is reasonable for you to enjoy your land here, all right. So, of course, it is a certain limitation. This is a common law case, okay. Bernstein and Sky Views and General Limited, 1978. So, the flights of an aircraft, okay, several hundred feet above a house, okay, is held not a trespass at common law. Several hundred feet, you can imagine, okay, the height there, okay. But, okay, if an aircraft or anything from it falls upon the land, the moment it touches the land, okay, or comes into contact with the structure on the building, on the roof, for example, okay, so in that case, or that is a case of trespass, okay, no matter the heights from which it fell, okay. So, in Malaysia, we have the section 19 of Civil Aviation Act 1969, okay, all right, it provides for the role here. Okay, it's more or less similar to common law, okay. Alright, so that's all for part one of trespass to land. Okay, uh, we are going to proceed later okay, to finish, okay, to complete the whole topic in part two of the lecture. Okay, I hope you are able to understand. Okay, alright, that's all. Okay, 
So, we'll, I'll see you later in part two. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.